Hello you absolute legends. What is the spirit of speedrunning? This is a question that seems to lie at the very heart of an ongoing debate that is currently raging in the Minecraft speedrunning community. On the 9th of December, one of the most controversial decisions I've ever seen was made by the Minecraft speedrunning moderators, allowing the use of external tools and calculators to be used during a speedrun to perform actions that were previously done by the runners themselves, effectively turning every run into a tool-assisted speedrun. Since the dawn of time, one of the most crucial skills in Minecraft speedrunning has been locating the stronghold. The stronghold houses the end portal, giving access to the final fight with the ender dragon and the quote unquote end of the game. The location of each stronghold is randomly generated, and the speedrunner must be able to quickly and efficiently pinpoint its position. Over the years, speedrunners have become much more adept at this skill, developing various techniques and strategies that attempt to find the stronghold in the lowest amount of time. At the top level, it's a skill that required excellent spatial awareness and a good understanding of some basic mathematical concepts like trigonometry. But now, this ancient skill is a thing of the past. With the click of a button, speedrunners can find out exactly where the stronghold is by using external programs and calculators. Gone are the days where you needed to actually use your brain. It's so much easier just to let a computer do the work for you. If this sounds ridiculous to you, you're not alone. Many of the best Minecraft players are furious that this kind of tool is now allowed in competition. Some of them just flat out refuse to use them, even though it puts them at a massive disadvantage. In this video we will take a trip down memory lane and learn about how Minecraft speedrunners over the years struggled to find the stronghold as best they could. By the end, you'll have a good understanding about why many of the more experienced runners find the removal of this art form to be a detriment to the game. We will also explore the uprising of these external calculators and find out how on earth they ultimately became acceptable. I will also share my opinion at the end and it will be interesting to see if you agree or disagree with my conclusion. I really hope you enjoy. Now legends, today we are truly blessed. We have a very special and prestigious sponsor. It's the type of sponsor that only comes around every one maybe 2 billion years. I'm talking of course about the greatest mobile game ever made, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a fantasy style RPG that now has over 600 champions for you to collect. I've been playing Raid for over 2 years and I can honestly say it's come a very long way since its beginnings. The game is now chock full of various campaigns, arenas and bosses. Speaking of which, Raid just released its newest boss, Hydra, and this thing is insane. It has six different heads, each coming with their own unique challenges. For example, the Head of Blight poisons your entire team. The Head of Mischief will steal your buffs and spread them to the other heads. You'll need to think very carefully about what actions you take against the Hydra if you want to do well. Raid is also giving away a super duper limited edition champion to every player in the game. It's esports legend Simple, and all you have to do to get him is log in for 7 days between now and January 28th. Just hit the link in the description or scan my QR code and you'll get an epic champion Virgis, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost and 1 ancient shard. You can find all of this treasure waiting for you here. It is that simple, just click the link in the description and I will see you in the game. Minecraft strategies have changed drastically over the years, with one of the biggest variables being the numerous updates that change the core mechanics and the location of critical structures. However, runs can still generally be split into four parts. And for some clarification, we are discussing the random seed glitchless category, which is by far the most popular. First is the overworld in which we spawn, where runners typically collect enough wood and iron to create a bucket and tools. This will both prepare them for and also allow them to enter the nether. The nether is the second part of the run where a fortress is located to farm blaze rods. On version 1.16, which is the fastest you can use, piglin bartering is also performed in the nether to attain ender pearls. 
The third section is the return to the overworld, where players locate and travel to the stronghold. On earlier versions, this is also where they attain ender pearls, either through farming endermen or trading with villagers. The final part of the run is the end, where players square off against the ender dragon. It's the third section that we will focus on today, which sees the runner locate and reach the stronghold. Finding the stronghold is a relatively simple process. When thrown, Eyes of Ender will float up into the air towards the direction of the stronghold. Throwing one eye will give us information about the direction, but will tell us nothing about the distance. Therefore, we must throw more than one eye and use some form of triangulation in order to pinpoint its exact location. The more eyes we throw, the more accurate we can be. We don't want to throw too many eyes though, as throwing eyes comes with numerous drawbacks. The most obvious cost to throwing an eye is the time it takes for the eye to hover into the air and then fall, allowing us to pick it back up. Ender pearls and rods, the ingredients we need to make eyes of ender, are extremely rare, so we absolutely need to recollect any eyes we can. The second drawback arises from the fact that each time we throw an eye, there is a 20% chance of it breaking and being destroyed. Therefore, the more eyes we throw, the higher the chances of us losing one or more eyes. This means we need to collect more pearls and rods in order to compensate for this, or risk losing the run entirely by not having enough eyes of ender to fill in the end portal. So throwing the minimum amount of eyes required is both faster and less risky. Ultimately, we want to throw as few as possible. For many years, the techniques speedrunners would use to triangulate were rather primitive. Eye throws seemed to be more based on feel than anything else. There didn't appear to be much structure or set logic, but there didn't need to be either. Times were relatively slow, so there was a lot of leeway. A perfect example of why triangulation is so important is a very famous speedrun performed by Illumina in February of 2020. It was a time of 23 minutes and 53 seconds, and when it was achieved, it was a new world record. But the crazy thing about this run is that Illumina lost over two minutes because he failed to triangulate the stronghold's position. After collecting pearls, he threw one eye, which showed him the direction. He then spent over a minute running in that direction, and he even stated during the run that he assumed the stronghold was far. The, I, I, I hate to be pessimistic, I think the for, uh, fortress is far. Or the stronghold's far, I, I really do think it's far. Like, I'm just, I know that sounds pessimistic, but it's what I think. However, after throwing another eye, he realized it was back the way he came, and ultimately, the stronghold ended up being directly underneath where he was when he threw the very first eye. A popular technique ancient players used to use was to draw a line using blocks along the ground. They would then deviate from this line and throw an eye. Where the new line intersected with the line they had drawn would be where the stronghold was located. An important thing to note about these ancient runs is that the players did not use the F3 debug screen. Before 2020, Minecraft was primarily run by the Japanese, who were much more traditional in the way they played. They didn't use F3 at all, and played on the hardcore difficulty setting. When Minecraft speedrunning became popular in the West, people cared far less about imposing such restrictions, and the debug screen became the most important tool in one's arsenal. The transition from no F3 to F3 is incredibly important as the debug screen provides the player with extremely useful information, such as the precise angle they are facing and their exact position. In the past, players could only triangulate by using vague spatial awareness and a general feel of where eyes were pointing. Now, with concrete numbers, they could begin to use math. In mid-2020, the popularity of Minecraft speedrunning skyrocketed, and we saw an army of new players join the competition. This increase in overall brain power resulted in an explosion of new triangulation strategies. Triangulation became especially important with the release of 1.16. In this newly released version of Minecraft, Bastions made their first appearance, which allowed players to barter for Ender Pearls. But pearls weren't the only useful things Piglins offered the player. Obsidian was also critical. After 1.9, the location of the strongholds moved much further away from spawn. Now the closest a stronghold could ever be was 1,280 meters from origin. 
This made travel time a massive concern. The fastest way to travel is inside the Nether, where each meter equates to 8 in the Overworld. The only issue is that to re-enter the Overworld, you'll need at least 10 obsidian to build a new portal. Luckily, we can get enough through Piglin Barters while waiting for Pearls. So once we have Rods and Pearls and have traveled far enough, we can build a portal and get back to the Overworld. This is called Blind Travel. It has that name because runners have no idea where the Stronghold is, so they are effectively guessing and hoping that when they return to the Overworld, it is close by. In practice, it could be anywhere from 2,000 blocks away to literally under your feet. And this is why triangulation became so important. If you do appear above a stronghold, you'll want to know immediately or risk making the same mistake Illumina did and end up running in the wrong direction. One of the earliest versions of triangulation was the 50 block method. The first eye is thrown and the angle is carefully checked. The player then moves 50 blocks to the side and throws another eye. Using trigonometry, you can then calculate how far the stronghold is away based on how much the angle changed. The greater the angle change, the closer the stronghold is. The math is too difficult to do on the fly, but some players memorized certain values so they could get an approximate distance. A much easier version that didn't require any complex math was created a short while later. This was the 17.5 block method. It's essentially the same as the 50 block method, but players would measure 17.5 blocks to the side by doing four sprint jumps. The 17.5 block distance is used to make calculation easier. The formula is simple. You divide 1000 by the angle change to get the distance. So if the angle changes by 5 degrees, the stronghold is 200 blocks away. If the angle changes by 0.5, the stronghold is 2,000 blocks away. Even more methods were eventually developed, but they all followed the same principle. Throw an eye, move a certain distance to the side, throw another, and use the angle change to work out the distance. The more accurately you aimed your cursor and moved the correct distance to the side, the more accurate your distance check will be. Knowing exactly how far away the stronghold is allows you to throw fewer eyes, which as we mentioned earlier is both less risky and faster. But it also opens the door to other strategies, and the most notable is called calculated travel. Sometimes when trading for enderpearls in bastions, you can get particularly lucky when it comes to obsidian trades. Plus, you may even find a large amount of obsidian in the various chests. This means that on some runs you end up with 20 or more obsidian, which allows you to build two nether portals. We can take advantage of this by building the first portal while we are farming blaze rods. While waiting for blazes to spawn, we quickly enter the overworld and perform our triangulation. This tells us the direction and distance to the stronghold. We then head back into the nether and finish farming rods. Now that we know where the stronghold is, we can travel to the corresponding location inside the nether and build the second portal where the stronghold should be. Calculated travel takes a ton of skill to do well. Not only does your triangulation have to be good, but you then have to figure out which coordinates the stronghold would be located at given the distance and direction from where you are. You then need to convert those coordinates to match up with where they would correlate to inside the nether. When you start getting into the more advanced triangulation strategies, your precision and quick thinking ability become much more important. Triangulation was a skill that could be improved and if trained would give players an advantage over others. But now we can kiss this skill goodbye. On the 9th of December, the Minecraft moderators made the decision to allow external tools so that we don't need to think at all. All we need to do is feed a program the information and it will tell us exactly where the stronghold is. Tools for finding the stronghold have been around for many years. In 2014, strongholdfinder.com was launched, which gave players an easy way to use triangulation without needing to do the math themselves. All you would need to do is input your coordinates and the direction the eye pointed to for two throws, and it would tell you the coordinates of the stronghold. Naturally, tools like this weren't used in speedruns. The older speedrunners considered this to be cheating, and besides, they didn't use F3, so it was impossible anyway. But with the new wave of speedrunners in 2020 came more modern perspectives. The old stronghold finding tools were primitive and slow. You needed to manually input the data to get a result. 
In late 2020, however, more sophisticated tools were created. With these new tools, all you needed to do was press F3 plus C to copy the information from the debug screen and the program would read the information from your clipboard. So you didn't need to manually import anything. You just needed to throw the eyes, aim your cursor, press F3 and C together, and the tool would give you the coordinates of the stronghold. One of the more popular tools was called ThrowPro, and after several of the top players began using it in runs, the community started to take notice. The response from the community was extremely negative, and after a vote in early January 2021, the use of calculators was officially banned. At the time, it seemed like people were generally against the use of external tools. But as the months went by, people started trying to find creative ways to circumvent the rule of no calculators. The main way to do this was to use spreadsheets that were already full of information. Technically, you're not using a calculator if all of the calculations were already done and you're just looking up the answers. In practice, they worked exactly the same as the calculators that were banned. You threw the eyes, pressed F3 and C, and a program would scour the spreadsheet for the pre-calculated answer. These spreadsheets were huge, containing many gigabytes of information as they needed to account for every possible position you threw the eyes from. The only difference between these tables and a calculator is that the calculation was done before the speedrun, instead of during it. The power of calculators can't be overstated, and their use goes far beyond triangulation. In fact, you don't need triangulation at all. When you throw an eye, it always points to the center of a chunk. Therefore, if you get an accurate measurement, you can know where the stronghold is with a single eye by drawing a line where it points and seeing where it intersects exactly with a chunk's center. It is impossible to do this without using external tools, whether that be a calculator or a spreadsheet. The mechanism is in my opinion irrelevant as they serve the exact same function. This didn't stop people from beginning to use these spreadsheets however, and the players that used them claimed they were legal. Eventually, a new poll was conducted to see if people wanted to unban the use of calculators, as it seemed like this rule was now ineffective with so many people using spreadsheets. And shockingly, the majority of people voted to allow calculators effectively making Minecraft speedrunning a tool-assisted speedrun by default. I honestly don't understand how a decision like this could be made. I think sometimes people get caught up with trying to arbitrarily lower their time or beat others that they forget what the point of a competition is. Ideally, the goal of a ranking system is to differentiate players based on their skill levels, where the greater the skill, the higher the rank. Obviously, Minecraft has a ton of luck involved, but I don't understand how removing a component of the run that revolves around skill makes things any better. Not only does this defeat the purpose of speedrunning in my opinion, but it opens the doors to other tools as well. We are already starting to see people construct tools that help tell us where the stronghold is without even needing to throw any eyes at all. This can be done through identifying certain features like buried treasure, nether portal orientation, and others. We can input certain information into a program and it will tell us where the stronghold is likely to be. And the types of calculations it performs could never be done by a human. One of the biggest arguments that was used in favor of unbanning external calculators was the fact that it's difficult to police them. Another was the fact that some streamers were getting help from their chat anyway. I personally find the idea of getting help from other people during a speedrun to be offensive and is something that should be banned. I also don't think that something should be allowed just because it's difficult to detect. I don't think that's ever a good reason. This decision is even more surprising after how well they handled the issue with pausing. Earlier in the year, I made a video about the growing issue of players abusing the pause function in order to make decisions, because pausing stopped the timer. When it became a concern, the moderators took steps to punish pause abuse by enforcing rules. And now, pausing is no longer a problem at all. And Minecraft speedruns have become much better to watch because of these rules. In the 1992 film A League of Their Own, there is a fantastic quote by the character played by Tom Hanks, where he states, in reference to baseball, It's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. The hard is what makes it great. 
When you make things easier, you take a piece of the magic away, and it loses prestige. People care less because watching someone do something that anyone can do isn't interesting. While speedrunning can be made easier through new strategies or new discoveries, it should never be made easier by letting someone or something do the work for you. I could never ever get behind a decision to allow any external tools, whether that be a calculator, a program, a spreadsheet, or anything else. In my opinion, a competitive speedrun should be between a player and the game, and nothing else. If you want to use programs, call it what it is, a tool-assisted speedrun. On the 19th of April, the speedrunner Brentilda became the first person to beat Minecraft in the Random Seed Glitchless category in under 10 minutes. His time of 9 minutes and 36 seconds is incredibly still the world record today. This was a massive achievement, but at the time, I had no interest in covering it because the run was full of pause abuse. It was terrible to watch, and I didn't want to promote it. With the introduction of external tools, I feel the same way. It makes me care far less about Minecraft speedruns, and if tools are used to create a new world record, the chances of me shining any kind of spotlight on it is essentially zero. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think tools should be allowed? And if so, why? Thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas, and I will see you in the next video.